Imagine this. The telescreen blares to life, the shrill sound piercing the oppressive silence of a darkened room. It's 7, 15 a.m. Time to wake up and face another day in Oceania. Winston Smith forces himself out of bed, his body aching from the lack of decent sleep. Naked, because the party only allows him 3,000 clothing coupons a year, and pyjamas alone cost 600. He grabs a dingy singlet and a pair of shorts, the only clothes he has, and prepares for the dreaded physical jerks. But first the coughing fit, it's violent and relentless, doubling him over and emptying his lungs. He gasps for air, his veins bulging with the effort, and that damn varicose ulcer itches like mad. 30 to 40 group, a piercing female voice commands from the telescreen. Take your places, please. 30s to 40s. With a jolt, Winston stands to attention. On the screen, a scrawny yet muscular woman appears, dressed in a tunic and gym shoes. Arms bending and stretching, she barks. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Come on, comrades, put a bit of life into it. Winston goes through the motions, his mind drifting back to the dream he had before waking. As he mechanically bends and stretches, he tries to cling to the fragments of his early childhood. Everything was so hazy. Beyond the late fifties, his memories were a blur. Without any records to refer to, even the outline of his own life was slipping away. Huge events he remembered might not have happened. Details of incidents were vivid, yet he couldn't recapture their atmosphere. In those days, everything was different. Even the names of countries and their shapes on the map. Airstrip One hadn't been Airstrip One. It had been England or Britain. He was fairly certain London had always been London, though. Winston couldn't remember a time without war, but he knew there had been peace during his childhood. One early memory was of an air raid that took everyone by surprise. Maybe it was when the atomic bomb fell on Colchester. He didn't remember the raid itself, but he remembered his father's hand gripping his tightly as they rushed down into the earth. Round and round a spiral staircase, his legs growing so tired he whimpered and they had to stop. His mother following slowly behind, carrying his baby sister, or maybe just a bundle of blankets. He wasn't sure if his sister had been born yet. Finally, they emerged into a noisy, crowded tube station. Winston's memories were fragmented and unreliable. In a world where the past is constantly rewritten, even recalling your own childhood becomes an act of rebellion. And so Winston stood there, stretching and bending, trying to hold on to the ghost of a time long gone. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Welcome to another dystopian morning.